Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, beloved. It's another day to praise the Lord. It's another day to draw near to Him. The day I've just been all over the place. Oh, getting this and getting that and then going. I measured the city like about five times. Today. I've gotten way too much exercise. Okay? Um. This is serious. This is serious business. You know, we're not playing here. The life is a serious thing. It's a fragile thing. And sometimes we're a little bit too careless. You know, there are consequences. There are things that would happen and we have to take care of them when we can. Okay, so that's what I've been doing. Um, so... Something I was about to say, what was I saying? Um, okay, so we're doing the 12 oxen. Just excuse me a second, okay? I didn't mean to come on right away, but it's time. So anyway, we're doing 12 oxen, and we're looking at the tribe of Benjamin. And Benjamin was blessed to be a warrior of God. We, Benjamin was blessed to be a warrior, and he had that warrior spirit. Um, look. Okay, I'm going to add this in as well. All right, so Benjamin was blessed to be a warrior, and he had a warrior spirit. His father blessed him to be a wolf, like kind of like a ram wolf, you know, where the wolf goes after the prey, he catches the prey. The wolf does not miss the prey. And, of course, he said that he would watch it with plunders enemies, and this is exactly what happened. And God allowed it to happen because God is the one who blesses and curses. Well, God is the one. Every good thing comes from God. So he's the one who blesses. Now, um, okay, so just give me one second. Let me just get this in order, okay? So we were doing... We were doing um, the twelve oxen, and Father was he was blah, blah. Father who was taking us to the tribes of Israel, and he had two in particular that he wanted to teach us about. One was Benjamin, and one was Asher, 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 Asher. That thing is supposed to be on my foot because they're already eating my foot, and I just came. All right, so yeah, so. We looked at Benjamin being blessed, and we looked at God using the youngest of all the sons, which would be the one that was looked upon with a frown. You know, it's just some, some someone that just, uh, you don't really expect much from them. You know, you just, oh well. Um, kind of like when Samuel, exactly like when Samuel was choosing David, he chose the, the he was choosing every other brother. You know, except that one. And God chose the one that was good inside. All right? So, go with me. Oh, Father, we just ask that you have your wheel like you always do, Daddy. Just teach us. Um, cause me not to give my private interpretation or opinion, but to give the word as you give it. In your name, Jesus Christ, amen. All right. So, um... Yesterday, we had five more to do, right? So we have to look at Judges. Oh, we looked at Judges 3.15 with Ehud, Ehud. And then we looked at 1 Samuel 9 with Saul. These were Benjamites, and they were great men in Israel, all right? We looked at Esther, and we, we looked at Father presenting himself as what? Ehud was a deliverer, Saul was a king, and Esther was a mediator. So these are things that Jesus identifies with. God identifies it. We also we also looked at um, Benjamin being the youngest, um, and 
they they looked upon the tribe basically oh you know it's benjamin it's kind of like oh you know it's scary but god god had blessed him with such a blessing to be a warrior to be somebody who would always overcome um anything that he was up against whether it's for his meals or whether it's for enemies um it's for war god had given the deuteronomy 28 um the part with the wall and, and all of that where you, your enemies will not overcome you and your hands will always have money you would um, be blessed to lend and not to borrow all that kind of thing went to benjamin because it spoke about his food he said he would be like a wolf after its prey what happens the wolf takes down its prey all right so benjamin was all those things right so the tribe of benjamin now even when they rebelled all right they um they won they won because that blessing was upon him now there would come a time where the tribe of benjamin would actually turn back to god god knows what he's done and he knows why he's done it all right so go with me to romans uh i don't know where my scripture verses don't ask me because i honestly not seen any all right so give me romans 11 1 all right and we're reading romans 10 because we always have to read all the verses before and after at all times. So we're reading Romans 10, last verse, and Romans 11, verse 2, right? We always read before and after at all times. Take it in context. Voila. All right, so Romans 10, verse 21, and it says, but to Israel, he said, all the day long, I have stretched forth my hands to a disobedient and gainsaying people. Romans 11, verse 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? So because they were rebellious, do you think God cast them away? No. When the Lord has spoken a thing, he has spoken a thing for a divine purpose. He has something that he's going to bring out of it. Check this out. And it says, I say then, has God cast away his people? Because they were rebellious. Did God say, you know, you can't you can't have a piece of heaven. You're not going to you're not going to get the chance to repent. You're not going to uh uh you're not going to get the promises that I gave to you. No. God says, listen, I spoke a thing and I'll do a thing. You were not a people. Now you are a people. So God says what? You are going to do that thing. You are going to fulfill it. You've been called by me. You are my people. I am married to Israel. Now, when you're in a marriage and the husband or the wife is acting up, what do you do? Do you tell them, well, listen, honey. Pack your bags and pack your clothes and leave my house. This marriage is over. Do you do that? Is that the way that Christ wants it? No. When a bulb is, is <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is kind of funny. But when a bulb is not working in the house, do you shut down the whole house, crush it down, and then build another house and put new bulbs in? No. All right, so give me a second here. Okay, I have a point. Um. So God says he will not just cast off his people because they're being rebellious. God is able to bring them in. How does God bring them in? God rebukes those he loves. Amen. All right. I can't take the mosquito bites anymore. They're eating my feet. Okay. So God rebukes those he loves. He chastises those he loves. Because he gives us a chance to come, each one. And the Bible says in Isaiah that all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each one. Which one haven't sinned? All our righteousness are as filthy rags before God. So all the holier than holies and the most holies, they're still filthy, right? God loves someone who confesses their filth. He 
loves, I mean absolutely loves, when someone would say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am the dirtiest, filthiest, wretched uh, thing that you ever made. And I just, I don't deserve any of this. I this, I that. He loves when you confess that you are a sinner. That's the first thing. All right. So we're looking at the uh, the tribe of Benjamin, and in with Benjamin, we're reading now. It says, "I okay, Romans eleven verse one. I say that has God hath God cast away his people? No, God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. Who's speaking? Paul. Listen." Verse 2, God has not cast away his people. What did he just say there? God did not cast away his people. All right. What did he say else? Which he foreknew. He foreknew. He knew them way before they even had a body. He knew them way before they were in their mother's womb. God foreknew. Those he foreknew, he predestined. And those he predestined, he called. And those he called, he glorified. He justified, and those he justified, he glorified. All right, Romans 8. What is this? This thing's annoying me. I'm going to cut it off. All right. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Watch ye not that the scripture says about Elisha, how he make an intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they've killed the prophets, dug down their altars, and I'm left alone, and they seek my life. Remember when Elijah did that? And what did God say? God says, I have 7,000 who has not bowed the knee or kissed the mouth of Baal. Yeah? God always has a people prepared. God loves mercy. And he desires mercy, not sacrifice. Remember what he said? Go and learn what this means. He said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Go and learn what this means. All right. So... Okay, so where are we with this? We are. In, we just read out Romans. Go with me to Philippians 3, verse 4 to 5. Cut. It would be really nice if you just jump back in the roof wherever you came from. Philippians 3, verse 4 to 5. Good so. Philippians 3, verse 3 to 5, all right, before and after verses at all times. My eyes are jumping. That means something good is about to happen. Philippians, <laughs> every time my eyes jump. All right, so, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit. What do you say? Okay, so remember, this was not a physical thing. Because we looked at the exchange of the sons where, you know, the eldest is supposed to be blessed, but the youngest got blessed. And this one is supposed to be, but that one was preferred. We looked at, we didn't look at it yet, but this is obvious. We looked at it in another sermon where God chose Abel's sacrifice and neglected Cain's because Abel did exactly as God had wanted. Cain gave him what he thought he wanted. Okay? Then, ouch. Philippians 3, verse 3 to 5. Okay, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit. What is he talking about? The circumcising of the heart, not the penis. Okay? So, it says, and rejoice in Jesus Christ, and have no confidence in the flesh. So, we... We don't follow our own minds, our own thinking. We follow, well, we choose it, but we follow the Spirit of the Lord that leads, all right? We don't let the flesh take the way and run down the road with it, no. Okay, so verse 4, though I might, not, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. He said, I more. Check this out. Verse 5. Circumcise the eighth day. Perfect circumcision. 
of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. So he's saying, listen, don't tell me anything about you being an Israelite and how, you know, it's by your works and this and that and the other. And, you know, you're lining up with the Jewish people when he is a Hebrew and he has been circumcised in the in the uh, in the spirit um but he's also a jew so he's confessing in a way that he is of the hebrew people but he knows that we ought to worship him in spirit and in truth and it doesn't matter that he is a hebrew or a greek it matters that he dwells in us because that's how we become a spiritual jew anyway all right so he makes it very clear and he says cut the nonsense okay so again uh of the tribe of benjamin a powerful man of god philip now check this out we're going into judges 21 5. First Timothy one fifteen. All right. So open Judges twenty one five. Give me verse four to six, please. Thank you very much. The amplified version was fine. Whatever. First Timothy one fifteen. So some very important people was taken out of what people did not esteem as important. Can God use something? that has been rejected yes he himself was rejected and he was portraying this in the tribe of benjamin ay 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 they destroyed my feet i got like about i don't know how many bites all right so god is able to use what the world rejects amen how many wants to be a reject of the world me <laughs> all right so the Bible tells us that he is the chief cornerstone that was rejected. All right, but God, but God, of course, we know that whatever the world loves, God hates. So whatever God hates, the world loves. The same thing, basically, I just said the same thing over. But God is showing that Benjamin was rejected, so he was used. Even that... He had a name. His name meant something. And one day we're going to do the meaning of the names of the tribes of Israel. That is assuming we have to do. It's important. Um, Benjamin was not called Benjamin at first. He was called something else. And his name was actually like a, a scar or a brand, if we would. Because... Um, Let's look at Jacob. Jacob's name. It meant scoundrel. It meant thief. It meant deceiver. It meant liar, right? Now, when God made him um, Israel, then it became an overcomer. And, you know, the one true God of Israel rules. His name, he said, because you have prevailed with men and with God. With God and with men. With men and with God. Okay, he says, you shall be called Israel. God changed his name. See what's going on? It's by grace God is moving. So he wanted us to look at the tribe of Benjamin, and this is what we're doing. Let's read Judges 21, verse 4 to 6. Amplified version. And the next day the people got up early and built an altar there, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Verse 5, and the sons of Israel said, which one from all the tribes of Israel did not come up in the assembly to the Lord? For they had taken a great oath concerning him who did not come up to the Lord a misful, saying, He shall certainly be put to death. Verse 6, And the sons of Israel felt sorry and had compassion for their brother Benjamin, and said, One tribe has been cut off from Israel today. What happened? A clear division. 
a clear distinction that he is no longer a part of them. And isn't that God wants to do with us? Isn't that what he's trying to do right now? He wants a division between world and his, his people. Whether they're, they're Jewish, whether they're Greek, God will bring them into the fold if they allow him in. Because he is the circumcising power. He is the uniting power. He's the root of our salvation and it's him we're grafted in. All right, so God is, he's using these, kind of like what he had to do with the tribe of Benjamin, where they were cut off and they were, they, it's like the same thing that he does with us when we are rebellious and when we were once rebellious and he went after us. Shut up! And it, that's a tomcat above my head. So we looked at, um, at him basically grafting us in by what? By grace are we saved through faith. So not ourselves, which any man should boast, all right? So God was working. He was working with the tribe of Benjamin. Check this out now. All right. So we could see that God does not revoke his promises. Who God bless, no man will curse. And we looked at that in the first part. You go and have a look at it. All right, so reading on further, Judges 21. <sighs> okay, so we just read that. My bad. First Timothy 1.15. There's nobody upstairs here again. I'm by myself. Y'all tell me when you're going, okay? Well, you're here. You're also some people. Jesus is here with me. Why are you whispering? <laughs> Okay, so there's nobody upstairs here. Okay, well, it's all right. There will be none of that nonsense. None, 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 none. Okay. First Timothy 1, verse 14 to 16. And it says, and the grace. What were we talking about just now? Grace. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus verse 15 does God lie I hear him saying something I hear him saying all the tribes of Israel get a portion of the city all all right now if God had not kept his promise what would this mean with us reading about Benjamin and judges that he was cut off which means that all of those, all the rest had a portion, but he didn't have a portion. But then when, just when you think, oh, well, the other tribes were, were obedient and they were this and they were that. Then you begin to see one by one, they all had struggles. But God is having us look at two today, Benjamin and Asher. So that's what I heard in his spirit. So God said, um, wait, can you repeat that again? Um, Right, so the minute that we looked at the ones that were being rebellious and the ones that were cut off, what did Jesus say? He, um, what did Jesus say? He said that I've come for the lost sheep of Israel. Amen? I've come for the lost sheep of Israel. I've come for sinners, not the righteous. I've come for these who are not worthy in your eyes. I, I can use them. Just remember the first thing that I said. God is able to use those things which are rejected. All right. So go with me to, what was it? First Timothy 14 to 16. Um, chapter 1. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation or acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. See what he did there? See what he did there? He just confessed that he is a chief sinner. Top, high ranking, the most guilty. Verse 16. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy 
that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern unto them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. He just said, listen, grace is given. Something I didn't deserve. I was a high ranking sinner. I was the top notch of them. But because I humbled myself or because God saw it good to love on me, to give me grace, to, to graft me in, I obtained mercy. He sought after him first. Okay, so it's just like that with the tribe of Benjamin, as well as we're looking at, which one? Revelation 7, 8. So remember what God was just saying. Um, give me verse 7 to 9, please. All right, so Revelation Seven, verse 7 to 9. Now, remember what I was just saying? Where he was just saying that he's not, he's, not li he's not a liar. So when he said that all the tribe's names have a gate and all have a special place, he didn't say some. He said all. This should tell us something. Alignment, 4.44 p.m. Oh, wow. Okay. So God is telling us something right now. What is he saying? He will. He is a God of covenants. He will keep his promise. But who is it going to be? Is it going to be a physical thing of judgment? No. God has no partiality with anyone. He loves a circumcised heart. So those circumcised of all the tribes. All right? If you reject the, the cornerstone, what do you have? You have a rocky foundation. You have a shaky, sandy foundation. and Nothing holds on sand. What do you have? You have a foundation that the wind and the waves will batter and bring down your house. All right. Go with me to Revelation 7. Let's read it now. Yes, please. No, not this. Oh, give me the wrong one. Hello. You are late. Revelation 7, verse 7 to 9. Wow, look at this. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin. We know all tribes were sealed, all right? So, but God had to make mention of Benjamin here because we're studying Benjamin. So check this out in verse 9 now. After these things, I looked and I behold. A great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palm branches in their hands. Why? Because it's people of the world that came from the 12 tribes that have been spiritually circumcised, as well as those who chose to be spiritually circumcised in Israel. All right? So this is Israel, the world. This is Israel, the spiritual part of Israel. All right, so now check this out. <sighs> Where are we here with this now? Right. So they have palm branches in their hands. Why? They say, Hosanna in the highest to the son of David. Who is that? That is Jesus Christ. Remember when they were celebrating him? Remember when they were um, welcoming him? Palm Sunday, that kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about? When he was coming in with the donkey in Jerusalem. He was making his entrance as king. Why are these in front of the throne with palm branches? Because they recognize him as the Messiah. 
So these are they, Holy Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Father. These are they that have recognized that he is the Messiah, have received him as the Messiah and are saved. Okay? So, not a big deal there, but... Um, not a, not something a big deal there, a huge deal there, but not something that is, you know, out of the ordinary. Basically, we've been talking about it all the time, all year through. So we ought to come into a spiritual alignment with God. He is the root of salvation. So we identify with Him. How? We identify with Him through the blood of the Lamb. We need that. Without that, none of us are, are going to heaven. None of us are going to heaven without Jesus. Stop that right now and stop thinking that we are because we're not going without Jesus. Amen? So it's not just the people in Israel, but the people of the world that are spiritual Israel. But they came from the 12 tribes because they're scattered all over the world right now. All right? Nice. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, go with me to well, Judges nineteen. Yesterday we looked at Judges twenty. Remember that? We looked at Benjamin being blessed for war. Benjamin was blessed for. Whoa, I'm doing so many things at once here right now. All right, so we're doing Judges 19 here right now. We're going to read a little bit. We're going to see what happens because it comes like David, when David was anointed a servant of the Lord, what happened? He went and committed adultery. He went and killed. He went and he was a murderer, an adulterer. He was all kinds, right? It's like Timothy said, of them, I am the worst. Me first. Who is the first sinner? Me. Who is the biggest sinner? Me. Who is unworthy in the sight of the Lord? Me. It's not a boast in your sin. But to boast in your weakness, that you are a sinner, that the strength of Christ will rest upon you. All right. Um, come on. Okay, I don't like to be disorganized, so I'm just organizing something. Just give me a second. We're going to read Judges 19 now. All right, there we go. I'm done. All right. God bless you, Brother Jeff and Marco and Sister Natasha. Nice to see you. I'm Brother Ryan. All right. So check this out. We're reading Judges 19. Let's see what's going on here. And it came to pass in those days, verse 1. And there was a king. There was no king in Israel. And there was a certain Levite. Levite. Who's the Levite? They were supposed to be the priests. So journeying on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. Verse 2, and his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house unto Bethlehem, Judah, and there was four whole months. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly to her and to bring her again, having a servant with him and a couple asses. And he took, he, she brought him to her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father in law, damsel's father, retained him and abode with him three days. And so they did eat and drink and watch there. Verse 5, and it came to pass on the fourth day when they arose early in the morning that he arose to depart. And the damsel's father said unto his son, Lord, comfort thine heart, thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go your way. I've not eaten anything yet. Absolutely. Ooh, eggs. I will drink eggs. <laughs> Yuck. And they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together, of the damsel's father, and said unto the man, Be content, I pray. And tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. Verse, 11, verse 7. And the man rose up to depart, and his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. Verse 8. And he rose again early in the morning, on the fifth day, to depart. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart, 
I pray thee, and they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat both of them. Ah, okay, so the father-in-law is showing favor to the son-in-law whose wife has played the whore. See what's going on there? All right, check this out. Let's go all the way down to Benjamin. Benjamin, where are you? Okay, go with me to verse 13. <sighs> okay, so this is the same thing that we read yesterday where the war started with the, the where they destroyed all the cities of Gibeah and all that evil and all of that, right? Um, but a lot of the children of Israel fell. And then God said, enough is enough. God said, it's time for judgment upon Benjamin. But who did it? God did it. And when did he do it? When he saw it fit. Go read Judges 20. All right. So, verse, verse 14. And they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them. They were by Gibeah, which belonged to Benjamin. All right. And they, they turned aside thither to go and to lodge in Gibeah. What do you mean it belonged to Benjamin? Remember Israel when he died, or Jacob, when he was dying, he, he gave each pe a piece of land? Verse 15, and they turned aside thither to go in and lodge in Gibeah, and he went in and he sat him down in the street of the city, for there was a well, was no man that took him into his house to lodging. Verse 16, and behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at Eden, which was also of the Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah, but the men of the place were Benjamites. Verse 17, and when he lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city, and the old man said, Whither goes thou, and when comest thou? Verse 18, and he said unto him, We're passing from Bethlehem, Judah, towards the, south, the side mount of Ephraim, from thence I'm from, and went from ben Bethlehem, Judah. And now I'm going to the house of the Lord, and there no man that received me to the house. This is how David walks. This is what he loves to do. He loves to go, and then people are supposed to take him in, welcome him. Not everybody's like that. This world's a crazy place these days. All right, check this out. <sighs> Verse 19. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. They're not needing anything. And the old man said, Peace with thee. How, howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me. Only lodge not in the street. Don't stay in the street. You bring all your needs to me. I'm going to, you know, you're going to have everything. So listen to what he did. And listen to where Jesus comes in here now. So he brought him into his house and gave him provender unto the ass. He fed the donkeys and washed their feet. And they did eat and drink. And now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, some sons of Beel, beset the house roundabout and beat the door and spoke to the master of the house and the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came to thy house, that we may know him. They were wicked. They were dirty. They were rapists. They were homosexual. Check this out. Verse 23. So they welcomed the man in. All right? Stranger, listen. And the man and the master of the house went out and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray, don't do so wickedly. Seeing that this man has come to my house, don't do this folly. What does this remind you of? Sodom and Gomorrah, where Lot was telling the people, don't do such a wicked thing. Here are my daughters who are virgins. They've not known a man. Go into them. And it said, go, go do what seems fit with them. Yep. All right. So the same thing's happening here right now. Here's what he said. Whew. Verse 24, Behold, here's my daughter, a maiden. Look what he's doing. She has no, no man, and it's concubine. And them, and I will bring them out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seems good. But unto this man, don't do such a vile thing. Verse 25, But the man would not hearken, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her. They had sex with her. They gang and raped her, and abused her all night until morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Verse 26, and then came a woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. Verse 27, and her Lord rose up in the morning, opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was folding down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold, the door. disgusting 
And he said unto her, Up, let us be going, but no one answered. And then the man took her upon an ass, and the moon rose up and got him unto his place. And he was coming to his house, he took a knife, laid hold of his concubine, and divided her together with her bones, I'm guessing a headache, into twelve pieces and sent her into all the coast of Israel. Verse 30. This is like when, um, who was it? Was it, was it? Trim your hair on your beard and divide them into three and send them out to the, uh, we got to find that again. It's in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 5, he says. Let's go there. Ezekiel 5, yeah. So they got raped her, he divided her into 12 pieces. He killed her. This is what I hear him saying. Talk about this. So Ezekiel 5, listen to what is happening here. Something's happening. What's happening? Judgment. All right. Ezekiel 5, verse 1 onwards. Here's what he said. And thou, son of man, take a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass on thine head and upon thy beard, and take thee bounces away and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third of the part in the midst of the city when the days of siege are fulfilled, and thou shalt take a third of the part and smite her bow with a knife, and the third part thou shalt scatter into the wind, and I will draw a sword out after them. Verse 3. Thou shalt take thereof a few in the number and bind it in thy skirts. Verse 4. And take of them again, and cast them into the midst of the fire, and burn them into the fire. And thereof a fire shall come forth unto all the house of Israel. What we read yesterday in Judges 20 was exactly this. Judgment had come upon them. Why? They would not stand up. They refused to stand up, basically. Uh... I desire mercy, not sacrifice. They, defre they refuse to stand. Okay, they judged. I don't know how to say this. We're going to go back into Judges 19 and read the last verse. And he was coming to his house. He took a knife, verse 29, and laid it on hold of his concubine, divided her, together with her bones in the 12, place, 12 pieces, and sent her to all the coast of Israel. That is horrendous. Verse 30, and it was so that all it was it was so that all that so it said there was no such deed done no seen from the day that the children of israel came up out of the land of egypt until this day something is happening there is a clear um what's that word i want there's a clear there's, there's something that cannot be denied. It's something that's presented. This is wickedness. What? What? And when they hear, why has he done this? Then they'll hear that the men came and they surrounded their house and they wanted to do wickedly with the stranger there. And the man gave his maiden and his concubine. And this is where the war started. And they said they were put this away from them right and that's where the war started that's what we read yesterday in judges 20 if you missed that go to yesterday's sermon you'll see it there where now they waged a war against benjamin and the lord said okay do it and do it and do it and do it but something was going on the tribe of benjamin was prevailing 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 it's kind of like what's going on in the world today where those who say, uh, who could come against us? Who shall we fear? There's nobody that can take us down. And they go against and battle and they overcome and they overcome and they overcome. One day, God is going to say enough is enough. He said it in his word, let him who is holy be holy still. Let him who is filthy be filthy still. God gave blessings out of his good heart. He gave blessings because of who he is. He is the almighty, the merciful God. But a day is coming, alignment 444, a day is coming where God is going to say enough is enough. Is the ark filled? 
with those who are really willing to enter, great. Judgment for everybody outside. Is, okay, how am I going to say this? I don't know how to say it. Father, help me. Is, it, are these my people who have accepted the blood that was shed for them? Are these all, uh, are these the ones? Is it all? All right. Then all who have not accepted the blood, guess what? A price is still found in wanting, and you will pay up. Yeah, that's where the black horse and the rider and the scales and the full claw for denarius, everything that is costly must be paid. And the Bible says that we were bought at a price paid in full by the blood of Jesus, and there remains no other sacrifice for us. But the blood of the Lamb, because you already paid it. If we don't receive it, that price is still wanting. God allowed Benjamin to have his day. He allowed it. And there's a reason that he allowed it. Because men of Israel fell from every single tribe. And this is like him showing us even that, listen, on that day, on that day, even as they purpose to put this evil away from them, many will be slaughtered. God is going to have his day where he slams the gavel down and says, that's enough, he's the just and righteous judge. Even though he blessed Benjamin to be a man of war, his time had come. Stir them up Stir them up. God was, what was God doing? Because he blessed Benjamin to be a man of war. What was he doing with the tribes of Israel? He was showing them that he kept his blessing on Benjamin. But Benjamin was doing wickedly now. Benjamin had come time to be judged. The time for Benjamin was to be judged. But God didn't make a complete end. Those who were coming against the children of Israel were slaughtered. Something like 18,000, was it, yesterday that we read? All right, go with me to Judges 20 really quickly. I cannot get out of my mind that thing now. But him cutting her up in 12 pieces. Follow my imaginations pretty well. Open. We'll examine another day where my time's up, but really examine another day where and why um, Israel was made to fight Benjamin. They, the Bible says when your brother does something against you, bring me forth two or three witnesses, to bring me forth the elders, bring me forth the church, bring me, and there was chances, 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 cut, end of chances, judgment time, all right? So that's the first part with Benjamin. That was Benjamin for you. But God would bring, of course, there were good people that came out of Benjamin. It's like when Jesus said, um, when when Nathaniel, Nathaniel, Nathan, Nathaniel, is it Nathaniel who is under the fig tree? It's Nathaniel, yes? I'm not doubting, it's Nathaniel. He said, um, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And he said, come and see for yourself. And what did he do? He didn't just take somebody's word for it, but what did he do? He sought out that thing. That is exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to seek for ourselves, to know exactly what. And he was demonstrating all of this in this tribe. All right. Benjamin, you're done. Next tribe from the tribe of Asher. Asher, Asher, Asher. We're going to look at the tribe of Asher next. I think we can end this right here and we can continue this and um, maybe later. Oh, my mind is running like clockwork. Because you're worthy, Father. Because you're on the throne. All right, let's just thank the Lord for his word. Let's end it here and then we will continue. Maybe this evening, maybe tomorrow, depending on once I'm able. You know, things in Christ who strengthens, strengthens me once he propels me forward, I will, all right, so, let's pray and thank the Lord, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for teaching us more about Benjamin, about the tribe of Benjamin, what they represented, and what they showcased, Lord God, 
was your power moving mightily upon them, even in mercy, Father, even as they were. They were your chosen, then they backslid, and then they called them back again, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are not a people who are sinning purposely against you, Father, but you are you are one who is coming after us. You are one who, who is pursuing us relentlessly, Lord God. You will not leave us to perish, but you bring us into your grace, Lord God. You clean us up, you wash us off, and you say, stand up there stronger than you've ever been because I am your strength. And because you have confessed your weakness in me, Father, even as Benjamin was brought low to the knees, Lord God, because they were continuously evil, we know that the time is coming where evil is going to be cut off and your people is going to be brought into their land. We know, Lord God, that you have prepared a place in heaven for us. We know, Father, that you're leading us there daily, Father. We just bless your name, Lord God, and we thank you that as we continue to study, you'll bring us to know all the tribes and what they had significant. They had the significance that they had in you, Father, that they, as your name, Jehovah Nisi, Lord God, they bear your name, Father, but in a, such a deep revelation, Father, that we can follow in their footsteps, not be the error, but be, take from them, learn from them, and walk in a way that is pleasing to you. In your name, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Our beloved. I hope this was encouraging to you. I hope that you learned something. <laughs> Dust just came in and I just sucked it up. I hope that you um you share this. If it was a blessing to you, I'm learning, you're learning, we're all learning. Amen. God bless you in his holy most precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen.